say so much. Really good, really good. No, thank you, Team New Zealand. Very, very good. Yeah, and I love the background pictures in your websites, guys. I think uh, that was really, really cool. So, um, well done. Yep, I think everybody uh, get down to Rotorua and get into those redwoods. They are well worth the trip, I can tell you. Yep, 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 yep. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, whoa, look at that. That's looking pretty flash. Yeah, go for it, mate. That's looking really good. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. Hi, this is Tim Malish. Hi, this way. Hi, this is Tim Malish. I'm Elcott and these are my teammates. We got the one. Hi. <laughs> hey, mate. Hi. <laughs> and then, this is Benedict. Hi. Oh, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Hi. And we are here to show you about our city, Miri. Brilliant. Malaysia consists of two parts, the west and the east. In the west, we have the iconic Petronas Twin Tower. We are in the east of Sarawak. We are located here. Miri is a coastal city in the northeastern of Sarawak, near the border of Brunei. Miri is the second largest city in Sarawak. Miri is also the commercial and the cultural heart of the Baram River Basin. There are lots of things to do when you're in Miri, such as food, shopping, and viewing the sunset. There are also lots of tourist attractions in Miri, such as the Grand Old Lady, the Gunung Mulu National Park, I mean the Lambe Hills National Park, and the Gunung Mulu National Park. Out of all of these attractions, we decided to present to you the Gunung Mulu National Park. So, I'll be stating four facts of Mulu National Park, which are, number one, Mulu is the world's largest underground chamber, which is the Sarawak Chamber, and the world's largest cave passage, which is the Deer Cave. It is also home to the longest cave in Southeast Asia. Number two, it was established in the 1974 and was operated by Sarawak Forestry Corporation Borsa Mulu Park Management Sundirian Berhad. Number three, it is outstanding both for its high biodiversity and its karst feature. And lastly, it is known for its natural phenomenon called bad exodus. The reason we choose Mulu National Park as the best example of sustainable ecotourism are it, is, it has guidelines by UNESCO and Forest Department of Sarawak in Malaysia and it is being protected by installing wire fences along tour, tourist routes in Mulu National Park to protect our natural heritage. Next, it has more low energy consumption in, in our place. For example, when tourists come to one of the ecotourism places, they will use less energy than being in shopping malls or any hotels out there. Lastly, it is our lovely treasure that represents Miri. So, what are you waiting for? Come visit Miri and there is more to discover in Sarawak. Bye! Bye. Absolutely brilliant, team. Very, very good. I think you put a lot of practice into that. That was awesome. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm on my way. Next flight. I'll come and see you next week. Me too. That was amazing. <laughs> me really away. good. You should be very proud. Very, very proud. <laughs> okay, we might move on to Team Thailand. Team Thailand. I've heard a rumor we might have twins in Team Thailand. Yeah. There we go, Team Thailand has started screen sharing. That's looking good. Hello, we are Team Thailand. Today, we will be presenting about provinces in Thailand. Good work, good work. Well, we're gonna talk about Thailand ecotourism. Thailand characteristics. Thailand climate is mostly warm and wet all year. Why you should visit Thailand? Thailand has many varieties of tourist attraction spots, such as temples, cities, forests, waterfalls, etc. Thailand food are delicious and cheap, and Thailand climate is not too hot or too cold, and Thai people are very kind towards tourists. We present you to interesting yet underrated 
promises in Thailand versus Peshaboon? So the first province, Peshaboon. Peshaboon is on the north central of Thailand, which have higher elevation. So Putaburg, Putaburg is a famous mountain in Peshaboon, very famous for its outdoor camping, very recommended to go in winter. Kalko, Kalko have a lot of tourist attraction spots, such as Wat Pasan Gao. This is a Buddhist temple, and it has five sitting Buddha statue. Next is Sirdit Waterfall. It's a single level waterfall that flows to the rock cliff. And next is Kao Kao Wind Farm. It's a wind farm at high hill and very beautiful scenery. How to get to Pechboon? Well, you can drive with bike car from Bangkok. It will take about four hours. And if you take a bus, it will take about six hours. Next is the food in Pechboon. The Wishamburi grilled chicken, very famous in Thailand. You can find it at Wishamburi intersection. And Lomgao Thai rice noodles. This type of rice noodle, it will be freshly made upon ordering. It's served with full sauce. You can, you can find it at the northern part of Pechboon. Okay, for Kongen, it's a province that doesn't popular, so you might don't know it. Okay, I'm going to show you Bung Ken Nakhon. I've ever been, <laughs> I ever been there before. That's a picture that has been taken by my family. It's a place for exercising and relaxing. It's kind of a nice place. Let's take a look at the food. Okay, here is omelette with an eggs. Not gonna lie, you need to come to Thailand and try it. I'm not kidding. It's really delicious. It's not much different from normal omelette. Um, and just bring the end of the presentation. Um, let's not know if you have any questions. That is awesome, guys. Really well done. I'm not too sure about your omelettes with ants, but the rest of the food in Thailand is pretty good. <laughs> good work, good work. Love it, love it. Well done. No worries. Okay, I think uh, next up we have uh, Team Korea. We've got uh, Team Korea online. There we go. Already in there. Jeepers, that didn't take long. Yep, we're all over it. Oh, look at that background. Love it. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, all good, all good, mate. Yes, good, good. Hi, everyone. My name is Sono. Let me introduce my team. The other teams seem to be made of all friends from the same school. But our team consists of Sono Jin from Bukpyeong High School, Yeosun from Songsu High School, and Junseok Jega from Sokcho High School. Junseok will introduce our country, Jega we present examples of sustainable tourism. Jiyun will elaborate further on these examples. Lastly, Yeozun will explain our, why our team chose these examples. Despite our, our work, first meeting, our team helped each other and cooperated well. Thanks to this wonderful team, I could learn coding happily. Thank you. Oh, we there? How's that? Can you hear us? I think we might have lost you, or is it just me? Yeah, yeah I don't can, hear more audio. Can you hear me? Oh, is Team Korea still there?
Hello? There we go, we can hear you, mate. Yep. I'm Gonjun Sok of Team Korea. I will introduce Korea now. Thank you. Korea consists of long, peninsula long, stretching north and more, north and south and more than 3,200 islands of three, 3, islands. Also, Korea is located at 127 degrees zero east of the end. The Asian continent, 37 degrees. Oh, oh. North of Tokyo, the Korean War broke out in 19, 1950, and it has been on the since 1953. And it remains a divided country to this these, these days. Korean culture is famous around the world. For example, inch cultural or K-pop culture. Korea's current is striving to make progress in exploration and attempts to create craft a masterful trade trade seat that can satisfy both economic growth and environmental preservation have been made a number of times. Korea has a large variety of notable ecotourism sites. Now we will introduce examples of sustainable tourism in South Korea. First, Debodo Island, called the Hawaii of Ansan, is connected to the mainland through the, the Shiwa. It is located in Danongu, Ansanshi, Gyeonggi-do. Debodo Island is composed of islands such as Songamdo. Puldo, Tando, and Yukdo, and various marine life in Hawaii. Second, Wangpichan stream is about 61 kilometer, kilometer long, and it's located in Gunnanmyeon, Ujinggun, Gyeongsangbukdo. Wangpichan stream is the home of endangered species and the perfect place to experience eco-friendly attractions. Third, Yanggu DMZ is located in Yanggu-gun, Gangwon-do. What is DMZ? It stands for Demilitary Zone, which means an area where military activities are prohibited due to war or conflict. Yanggu DMZ functions as ecotourism at the same time in that it is out of reach of humans and the, and the environment is very well preserved. Last, Suncheon Bay is located in Suncheon, Jeollanam-do. Suncheon Bay is a beautiful lake garden. It is known that Beautiful animals such as black cranes are around this area. Lastly, I'll be explaining as to why I chose these examples out of the many examples of ecotourism in Korea. Daewoodo Island got chosen as Daewoodo has its unique assortment of attractions, such as unique species of clams and with short neck. It's been known as one of the best marine ecotourism sites in Korea, so it is hard to not to include on my list. Wangpichun got chosen as it's the habitat for a lot of endangered species, ultimately earning its designation of ecological and scenery preservation area. Due to climate change, global warming, and other various environmental problems, biodiversity is being threatened, which can cause a chain reaction and lead to the extinction of other species and eventually us humans.
Therefore, one pigeon acting as a habitat for these endangered species is something that I believe to be very meaningful. And that's the reason why I added this, this place on my list. I chose Yango DMZ because of its historical value and how it works as, as an ecotourism site simultaneously. Korea's dream reality is that it's been divided into two separate countries due to their opposing ideologies. And the DMZ serves as a reminder of tragedies such as the Korean War we Koreans had to go through in the past. Yango DMZ is a place untouched by human hands, so its environment is preserved very well, allowing it to be on this list. Sunshan Bay. Sunshan Man Bay um, was chosen due to its outstanding view, its designation of UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, and due to how it acted as a habitat for hooded cranes. Sinchon Man Bay is extremely famous for these reasons, so I felt like the Sinchon Man Bay would be an excellent example of ecotourism in Korea. Now, I want to take a look at the future of Korea's ecotourism. So how can, how can Korea move on from this? How can Korea's ecotourism improve? Korea's attempt at ecotourism is relatively recent. In fact, there were hardly any mem memorable ecotourism sites in Korea back then. Also, most of the research on ecotourism in Korea are either about what ecotourism is or if it's possible to apply ecotourism into a certain place. In the case of foreign countries that were successful in their attempts of implementing ecotourism, their approach was much more active. Therefore, in order for Korea to succeed, they have to take a more active approach and seek to craft a strategy that can satisfy both economic growth and the preservation of our environment. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant, team. That's really good. Yeah, I know how difficult it is to do it across different schools and across different connections and uh, really worked well together as a team. And um, I yeah, love add... the imagery. That was really good. Oh. The imagery was awesome. Yeah, it exceeded three minutes, but that's okay. <laughs> we will be forgiving. We will be forgiving. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. Team Philippines, I think you're up next. Can you hear us, Steve? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, rock and roll. Hey, so, uh, yeah, we're the Philippine team, and we're a Sibuit National School, also known as CIS, and we are a school that uh, gives an ID when you uh, finish grade 12. And my name is Aryan. This is Diana. Over here is Elijah. There's Casey, and this is Becky. The main tourist attraction in our country is its diverse biodiversity. Our beaches, historic towns, mountains, rainforests, islands, and land spots are among the most popular tourist spots in our country. Our website features popular tourism spots in our, in our country, and we also included a discussion about hyper-using products in the country and their effectiveness. So an um, example of a tourist attraction is the Hotan Cove. Now, there are many activities to do in Hotan Cove. One of them is swimming. The other is to go boating, which you can go inside a cage and look at the clear water. There's also a place called the, the Genesis Cove or the Solomon Cove. In there, you will see the benefits where they search it for native children. The Golden Cove is just one of those examples of natural beauty that is present in the Philippines. It's also an example of sustainable ecotourism in the Philippines. It's one of those places where tourists are attracted to. But of the 30 inland lakes present in the Golden Cove, only three are accessible to the public. And it's also a bastion for natural wildlife to come and spawn. So Silicon Cove is just one of those sort of beautiful natural places, a gem of the Philippines that really captures our sort of attention on natural and tropical beauty. And it's just one of those spots that you have to visit. It's, we know it's not as grand as some other places, but it's one of our 
one of our, one of the best yet. So. But the Hotem Tov, it really is an experience. So we took as the Hotem Tov because even though we are, well, there's a lot of swimming involved, we can also do boating and also navigate the island to see the Tarsiers. And even when you are swimming, you can see the animal life, like the sea turtles and the stingless jellyfish. And yeah, there's a lot to do with interacting with the environment and animal life with little to no harm. So yeah, that's our website. We've shown the Sultan Cove and uh, we've explained as well what it is. And uh, thank you everyone for listening and looking at our website. We encourage you to visit and to partake in some of these spots of the tourism to really uh, advertise that sustainable and um, conservational uh, tourism around the world. And we hope that you've been inspired to really get out there and experience some of the natural delights that are present in the place. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, team. That that looks like an awesome place to visit. All of those places there. That's that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Well done. Yay. Okay. Uh, next up, I think we have uh, Enterprise Twelve from uh, Vietnam. Uh, are you guys ready? What have we got? Okay. So can we share our screen now? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Oh, sorry, Team Philippines, I think you might. There we go. Yeah, now here we go. Enterprise yeah. 12, you're on. There we go. Rock and roll. Look at this. Yeah. All right, so shall we start now? Start. Yep. Yeah, far away, guys. Okay, so hello, everybody. We are the Team Enterprise Up from Vietnam, and today we're talking, going to talk about our projects for the international round, which is the Baku Fung National Park. So our presentation will have five parts the team introduction, the country introduction, some examples of sustainable tourism in Vietnam, explanation of Kufu National Park and why we chose Kufu National Park. So our team consists of five members. We were the team leader, I, Hang Da, Hak Dung, Duy Hoa, and Van Mei. So we're all from the same school, which is the time my secondary school. And we also share the same hobby, which is coding. So, you know, our cooperation is very simple. It's very easy, nothing much to say about. Now, uh, one thing we'll talk a bit about Vietnam. Our country, Vietnam, is a small country located in southern east of Asia. Vietnam is a place built with landscapes and popular among tourists from all parts of the world. Next, Kak Sung will talk about some examples of sustainable tourism in Vietnam. Here are some examples of sustainable tourism sites in Vietnam. Our first recommendation is Kunzer Eco Tourism Area. Its location is in Ho Chi Minh City and its area is around 7,000 hectares. It's been listed as a biosphere reserve by UNESCO. It is a wetland biosystem dominated by mangrove and rare species and there are over 100 species that identified in this area. Our top recommendation, however, is Cook Phuong National Park. It is located mostly in Living Province, and its area is approximately 32,200 kilometers square. It is regarded as Vietnam's largest national park and one of the most important biodiversity sites in Vietnam as well as Southeast Asia. It is home to hundreds of species and plants and animals. Moving on, Duy Khoa will show you the explanation to Cook Phuong National Park. So we've chosen this national park because it is a famous primary primeval forests for those who like sustainable tourism. Kufu National Park has a variety of destinations inside it and it's better for tourists to walk and explore them themselves. Like Miriam will do a part. So now to the reason we chose Kufu National Park because Kufu National Park is simply really wonderful. On 20th of June, we had a very interesting experience in Kufun together. Kufun is a place where not only us, but everyone can immerse themselves in wild nature. This place is also the treasure of our country, Vietnam. So we want to let people from all over the world know about the beauty of this forest. We also had a lot of memorable things to share with each other here at this place. Now for the summary. 
We've talked about some examples of sustainable tourism in our country, the explanation of our example, also known as Kukfeng National Forest, and why we chose Kukfeng as an example. Thank you for listening. Absolutely brilliant team. Well done, well done. It's very, very good. Did you want to show us your website? Where's your website? Because that was pretty cool. Oh, so that that was a presentation, wasn't it? Yep. Yeah, no, it Wonderful was good, uh, presentation. Really clear and yeah. got all the points, guided the audience. Love it. I'll just quickly share your, your website, guys, because um, I thought that was a pretty good one. So we'll just share that and show everybody what you've done. Um, okay. Yep, that's the one. So, yeah, so again, great imagery. I think, you know, you'd had it all listed out in here. You even had sort of um, pricing and things that you can do for different activities and whatnot. So it was really a... Um, Steve, they're ready to go to open their own business. I know, now. you've got your business ready to go. That's awesome. I hope you're getting a cut of this. Yeah, yeah. So no, really well done on the website, guys. That was really good. Well done. Okay. Uh, I think we're back to Vietnam for Flames. Uh, flames, what's going on, Flames? Enterprise trail is still dancing around. Yeah, keep dancing. <laughs> yeah. Enterprise is still excited for flames, I guess. <laughs> Here we go, Team Flames. Yep. Are we audible? You're audible. Rock and roll. We also have another team member. Her name's Kayla. She's in another different place right now. She was. She. I think she is in the call. She's also Flames Inc. So she will be speaking apart, but uh, it's separate. Awesome. No worries, guys. That's good. All right, I'll let Lisa take over now. Um, hello, everyone. This is my team, what Rosie, Bella, Ted, Lisa, myself, and Kayla, who is online. So uh, we are from ICC School, Thai Binh Du in Vietnam, and we are really excited to present our website to you today. We have learned so much from you guys over the summer. Now, I would like to pass it over to my teammate, Rosie. Now I would like to give a brief <coughs> introduction of our country, Vietnam, situated in the south uh, town of Asia. Vietnam is usually known for its cuisine, history, landscape, and the uh, and the diversity of its natural resources, which are ideal for both tourism, especially sustainable ones. Here in Vietnam, our government encouraged the enhancement of sustainable tourism. One noticeable example is the Thoi Sơn Island. Located in the lower parts of the Tien River, the island itself is famous for its food and landscapes. The main reason why Thoi Sơn is considered an example for ecotourism is uh, because of its environmentally friendly activities. Um, Tyson residents don't rely on electronic device much. Um, that's why most of its activities are connected to the natural and the wildlife. And now my teammate Bella will give you a more detailed insights about it. So thank you, Kayla, for your part. So once you've been here, you definitely shouldn't miss out on all of these fun activities. First of all, exploring the islands led by boat, canoe, or even taking a carrier trip will definitely give you once in a lifetime experience. Besides, you should try learning how to do traditional craft and listen to the smooth vocals of the Gatao singers. And don't forget to give catching fish a try if you can. And if you're tired, you can rest and have a sip of a farm honey wine. In addition to recreational activities, restaurants that provide local dishes can be found on the west side of the river. Well, the first dish is grilled snake catfish. After being cleaned, it's cooled over straw to release a delicious aroma. And next is deep fried sticky rice. The dough will inflate like a balloon when cooked. And finally, you shouldn't miss out the famous Vietnamese pancake dish. It's called Ban Seo. The unique rice now pancakes are an option by visiting Tosong Islet in addition to the classical pancakes. Now, out of all the locations we could have picked, why this one specifically? To the environment, this place had put tremendous efforts in maintaining and preserving the original nature of the wild. 
To the people that built this, it was a monument for their hard work and dedication to creating a park fun for everyone, including Mother Nature. To the visitors, it serves as a diversion from the stressful work or from a loud and busy, noisy cities, a temporary oasis. As for the locals, it gave them a chance to preserve and carry on their proud traditions from the food to the villages, whilst also making a living and teaching the rest of the world about their own culture. That wraps up our presentation about our website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Flames. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yep, yep. I really want to get up there and try that uh, hand fishing in the, the muddy pools there. That looks brilliant. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we've got up next uh, Team Indonesia. And I've just had something come through. I think uh, we might have a take two on Team Japan too. So if Team Japan can get ready for to jump in after Team Indonesia, we'll, we'll pick up your one after that, okay? So Team Indonesia. You're up. I can see you're all there. You're looking good. Good morning, everyone. Selamat pagi from Jakarta. Judges, teachers, and friends. We are Team Indonesia, and today we are going to present about ecotourism in our country. But first off, who are we? Our names are Jonathan, Tiffany, Annabelle, Ivan, and Eden. We are part of Team Indonesia and students of PITD or Penabur International Tanjung Dore. Next, I'm going to pass it to Annabelle. Thank you, Ivan. Okay, so first of all, we will talk about our home country, Indonesia. Indonesia is a country in Southeast Asia. As it consists of over 17,000 islands, Indonesia is the world's largest island country and the 14th largest country by area. With over 2,200 animal and 8,000 plant species, Indonesia is also ranked third in terms of the most biodiverse country. Of course, like any other country, we also have our own fair share of ecotourism. There are several examples of this. However, we are only going to talk about Komodo National Park today. Now, Jonathan will continue more about this. Thank you, Anne. So, Komodo National Park, which is a global conservation priority area, is the one and only place you'll be able to find the magnificent prehistoric feature, the Komodo Dragon. Tourists visiting Komodo National Park may also experience diving, snorkeling, hiking, and much more, which is what we will be talking about today. Komodo National Park is home to one of the world's richest marine environments, which tourists can visit. Diving spots range from challenging blue water current dives to low visibility mock dives. Now I will pass this on to Tiffany. Thank you, Jonathan. Now I will explain more about the Komodo National Park. The breathtakingly beautiful landscape on Pada Island is second to none. As you ascend to one of the many hills, you will be swept away by the beauty of the mountain views. Mesa Island is another island located there. It is the perfect destination for tourists to get a glimpse of the traditional life led by the Bajau people. Visitors can witness locals engage in their daily activities and visit the stilt houses on the beach. Everything and anything an adventurer has ever wished for is available in the Komodo National Park, such as diving, snorkeling, and even observing the ancient Komodo dragons in the wild. Don't miss the chance to visit the unique Komodo National Park when visiting Indonesia. I'll pass this on to Eden. Thank you, Tiffany. So the aim of this website is to promote ecotourism in Indonesia. We hope that with this website, these places can be more recognized by international tourists and also grow Indonesia's ecotourism potential. The reason we chose Komodo National Park for our presentation is because this park can only be found in Indonesia, so it somewhat adds to Indonesia's identity and speciality. The Komodo dragons are also one of Indonesia's national animals, and these ancient creatures are now endemic to only Indonesia. Thank you for listening to our talk about ecotourism in Indonesia, and as we Indonesians say, Terima kasih! They even had the Komodo dragon that was on the Jeopardy game. <laughs> yes, it was too, Lina! <laughs> now I really want to go see it. Wow. Really good, yeah. I, I do want to see, but I'm just a little bit scared. So, um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see if I can uh, tough it up and get across there. That'll be brilliant. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, no, thank you, Team Indonesia. Very, very good. Love the website. Great design. Very easy to read. And the uh, imagery was really, really cool there, mate. So, well done. Well done. Um, just before we, we get uh, sort of into the next stage, uh, we will go with the take two for Japan because I think Japan has got their Wi-Fi all sorted. They are ready to go again. I can see Show plugging in something there, doing some magic. So, Show, we've got three minutes. You reckon we can uh, give that another go, Show? All righty. 
Working all right. He's plugging in something. I can see him doing something. How are you looking, Shay? I can see. Here we go. We've got a screen share coming. Yeah, look at this. Perfect. Okay. No worries, guys. We all know about the uh, internet and Wi-Fi, so we'll go for a take two, mate, and uh, off we go. Okay, can you hear us, Sean? Uh, oh, Here we go. Team Japan's back. Rock and roll. Nail it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, our Wi-Fi disconnected. No, it's Can okay. It? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. We all understand about that. No, it's, all it's all yours. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about ecotourism of Hokkaido. To begin with, I'll introduce my teammates. My teammates are Moeki and Ritu are third graders, and Chinatsu, Maria, and I are second graders. All of us are students from Korea High School in I'm Kusuro. sorry to interrupt you. Team Kushiro, please turn the a video on. Oh, oh. oh. These things are always a learning, a learning experience, right? Uh, okay, Arina san, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, looking good now. Oh, me too. Okay. Okay. Next, I'll be introducing about Japan. Japan is consists of 47 prefectures and divided into eight areas. Each area has its own local cuisine, and here in Hokkaido, we can enjoy dishes such as seafood. And also, Japanese people's politeness and sympathy and how they take communication in indirect way are being evaluated all over the world. Okay. Next, we'd like to introduce Rake Akan as a particularly interesting of ecotourism because you'll find different landscapes there from season to season. Akan is located north of Kushiro and east of Hokkaido. In spring, in spring, you can enjoy cruising at the time of the melting snow. In summer, Coming down the Akan River and camping are popular because the cool temperatures. As summer passes, uh, colorful autumn leaves begin to decorate the lake, and you can feel the fall atmosphere. In winter, we have a lot of snow, so you can enjoy skiing and seeing uh, cranes, which is the symbol of Kushiro. I would like to explain furthermore. Um, I know is an ethnic local people in Hokkaido, and you can experience your own culture at Ainu Kotan, that is a village. And this is Lake Akan. And there you can feel how great, how fantastic nature in Hokkaido is uh, by, for example, walking, cycling, and fishing. And at the bottom of the Lake Akan, the green green ball shaped uh, plant called marimo exists and uh, you can you can see such a round marimo only here in the world finally i'll tell you why we recommend akan for ecotourism trails first and as mentioned before there are many beautiful places that you can get relaxed or feel nature in akan second uh, it has traditional culture, Ainu. Uh, Ainu, Ainu, but it is tend to be forget for by almost people, even if it is Japanese in these days. So we thought we can 
tell this severe situation. So introducing ecotourism in Akan. Uh, why don't we why don't we tell Akan and Ayu to worry with us? Thank you for listening. Absolutely brilliant. There we go. Well, difference Wi-Fi makes. That's really, really good, team. <laughs> nice. Thank you. And thank you for introducing the Ainu uh, Indigenous culture too, because that's important. Yeah, very, very good. Hopefully, we'll get up there and see you soon. Brilliant. Okay. So I think that brings to an end our presentation uh, part, it, Lena. I think. Uh, yep, it sure does. So I think I might uh, allow the judges a couple of moments to um, powwow with each other. That includes you, uh, uh, Mr. Steve there. Yep. And uh, you can just um, chat to me the winners of the, of the show here. In the meantime, uh, I'm just gonna chat with all of the students on the call and tell them, you know, well done guys, okay? You know, it was a learning try, you know, nothing is ever perfect. It's always a work in progress, you know. And even though you may feel like, ah, oh, well, I could have done that, I could have done this, or I could have done, you know, that's all right. It's all, tomorrow's another day, and you'll have another chance somewhere, surely, if not here again, with us at school or wherever. You'll take this and you'll remember, right? What is possible? And uh, it was quite inspiring to see the different sort of examples of ecotourism uh, in North Asia, Southeast Asia. And uh, I'm looking forward to taking a few trips to seeing some of these locations which you have introduced to us. So, so thanks to so give yourselves a little pat on the back and a nice you know, deep breath for getting through it, especially with uh, technology these days, very big deal. Uh, with uh, the digital age coming down on our heads very quickly. So this sort of stuff is always uh, a learning experience, as I've said before. So, and with that, how are we doing, Steve? Have we got any decisions made yet? I think we'll give them a little more time. And um, I think it's a hard call for them to be honest with you. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a judge. <laughs> Well, speaking of, you know what's very interesting? Every one of you tried to put a perspective and share with all of us just a little snippet of your country. And I think for all of you on the call, everyone else included, um, the adults in the room, the teachers and students have learned just a little bit more about what's out there in your various countries. I certainly didn't know a lot of these places, I'll say it again. And so I was quite happy with, with these uh, presentations, albeit they, some of them, I'm sure next time, if we had a little more time, perhaps we would, what well, we can expand this into a real presentation, you know, with the critical, uh, how shall I say, um, a more rigorous presentation experience, but no, this, most of all, this is about learning to code. So take what you learned too with what you did with Steve, learning HTML and building your websites. You know, keep practicing that. Keep practicing because that is an important skill for the future. And you never know if you get good enough, you actually might get a real, you know, a real good job in the future. Uh, it's not just about that. It's also because if you like to code, you can do a lot of things, more than just websites. So, and I'll stop talking for a moment.
All right. All right, Lita, just to let you know, I think the judges are, are returning back to the main room. Okay, wonderful. Alan, we'll just wait a little bit longer and thank you for your patience, everyone. So getting to the final results, of course, and of this tremendous code camp between eight countries, I'm still, wrapping my head around it, <laughs> that we can actually do that these days. Okay, so it seems we have our winners and just give me a moment for me to update the slide. So won't be long. I think we're looking good team. Everybody's a winner to be honest. That was a very, very good effort from everybody. Um, yep, special mention to Team Japan for the internet and the Wi-Fi and having to do two goes at it, but that was brilliant. Yeah, love the vibes, love Team Malaysia with whatever you were doing with your screen and coming out and popping your head around or whatever, that was brilliant. Yeah, Pepe, everybody's website's looking good. No worries. Oh, and I've just had a question pop up in the chat, and uh, we were going to mention this at the end of the day, but I will mention it now. Um, the question says, do we keep these Code Avengers accounts? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, from Code Avengers, uh, we'd like to give everybody on the call today, you have a one-year access, so you will have uh, 12 months from July 1st, per se, so till the end of June next year to uh, continue your learning your study um feel free to have a look around and other courses in there um you know we touched on the html the css but uh if you want to start looking at app design or game design there's some courses in there you can do as well and um you know just have fun uh, no pressure just uh see what you can come up with and if you have any really cool business ideas let me know yeah, yeah. team korea are you in a car I can see Team Korea G I E I. It looks like you're in a car. No? Yes, actually, I'm in a car right okay, now. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> the, the wonders of internet connections and diabetes is brilliant. <laughs> all righty then. We're back on track and okay. We are ready to announce the winners. There we go. Drum roll. Uh, have you got any drums? I haven't done drums. I've got something, maybe a pen. <laughs> so, aye, aye. in third place, Vietnam and Malaysia. Oh, a okay. double. Okay, we have a third place Vietnam equal. E well aye. done, guys. So, Team Malaysia and Team Vietnam Enterprise 12. Well done. Awesome. Uh, judges All love right. your websites and great and feedback. For everybody yeah. else, there's always next time. Now, second place, Vietnam again, the Flames. The My Flames, goodness. well done, the Flames. Well done. Very, well done, very guys. good. Yes, yes, yes. Loved it. Yep. They worked hard. Uh, they worked hard. Yes, yes, indeed. First and place. last but not least, a big drum <gasps> roll for Here first we go. place, Indonesia. Team Indonesia. Yes, yeah, I can see the dancing going. Triumph. Well done, Team Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> now really really well done guys i think that was a brilliant effort and uh you know website presentation all top notch yep i think um the feedback we had from the judges was you know strong intro love the website awesome design amazing content uh very uh concise and clear presentation sophisticated website congratulations very very well done team indonesia <laughs> And remember, much. everyone, if you didn't get selected this time, it's not because you weren't, let's say, that's not because you're not a winner. It is simply because 
Don't no, everybody did. Yeah, everybody honestly won this one. This this was a uh, nine first prizes. To be honest, it was it was all very good. Um, looking at your website content yesterday, you all nailed the coding and that, so that was very good. And then, I see um, some happy people. I can see some dancing people. Nothing wrong with the dance. That's good. The point yeah. is to never stop trying and <laughs> keep trying and trying and trying. You know, as they say, you know, Edison with the light. How many times did he fail? I think about a thousand times it was before he finally <clears throat> could get the light bulb to work, you see. So don't take this as a discouragement, all right? And, but well done to our winners. Definitely. I'm seeing we'll some see chat uh, messages come up there from Team Korea. Thank you all for your hard work. Thank you, Team Korea. Um, Team Malaysia, congratulations and well done to the coders. Brilliant. From Lito, awesome presentations, awesome websites. Yep. The winners were the people who learned the most from Tim. There you go. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You know, and to be honest, you know, when we think about it, we started that day at whatever the time it was in your country. Uh, and six hours later, we come up with this. So that was very, very well done. Very impressed. Yep. I would like to now prepare everyone for a little bit of a song from our participating school in New Zealand. Here we Is go, right? go to New Zealand. Actually, I think I skipped ahead a bit, didn't I, Steve? This, the judges would like to give some feedback, was it? Uh, yes, yes, yeah. No, no, all good there, Lena. I think, um, yeah, feedback-wise, I think, yeah, just, just what we covered off there. Um, yeah, okay. amazing. Team Philippines, congratulations, everybody. Excellent job from Kay in Korea. Thanks to all the students, yep. Uh, Chotuk, congratulations to everybody. No, I think... Um, yeah, from the judges, I think we were all very impressed with the presentations, all very impressed with the websites. Um, absolutely, nine winners, nine first places. Yep. And I think Team New Zealand's standing up there. I can see them getting ready for something. Yeah. Okay, all right, hold on. You guys are ready, right? All right. Okay, Lena's there. Yep. I think we can try to so we can. Can we spotlight uh, Team New Zealand, Lisa? Yep. Oh, I'm on it right now. Oh, I've read. Here we go. Oh, Really good, really good team. Thank you. That uh, yeah, bring back memories for me. That's brilliant. Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Okay, well, I think that just about brings an end to our proceedings for today. Um, yeah, once again, from everybody on the call, thank you. Thank you to everybody for all your amazing work over the last seven days. Um, absolutely nailed it. And uh, I'm always uh, surprised and just blown away by what you guys can do so quickly. Um, yeah, my old brain doesn't think as fast as your guys, and you do very well. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. And I suppose if there aren't any other comments from the others, uh, anyone else would like to say a word, we will kindly wrap up our event.